Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be learning about liver function tests. Now, the liver plays several important roles in the body, including producing clotting factors, digestive enzymes, and detoxification. Because of all of these, it's important for clinicians to know when the liver may not be functioning well. This video will help you understand some of the lab values we assess to determine the liver's health. If you end up learning anything from this video, please hit the like button and show your support. Thank you. Even though we tend to refer to these labs as the liver function test, the more appropriate term is actually hepatic panel. This is because the test doesn't only assess the function of the liver, but also it helps us determine the possible damage to the liver. So going forward, we will refer to this as the hepatic panel. The hepatic panel tells you about the state of the liver. Is it functioning normally? Is it damaged? Is it producing all the things it needs to produce, etc.? To get the answer to all of these questions, the hepatic panel assesses the following. Hepatocellular, so these are the enzymes of the liver. It also assesses the liver's role in the biliary system, and lastly, the synthetic function of the liver. Now, let's learn a little bit more about these three things. First, hepatocellular. Now, the two main enzymes of the liver that we focus on are aspartate transaminase, AST, and alanine transaminase, ALT. These are markers of liver injury. So if there is some injury in the liver, it will trigger the release of these enzymes into the bloodstream. Overall, these enzymes are needed to catalyze chemical reactions. These chemical reactions can lead to the production of bile, the production of clotting factors, and the breakdown of food and toxins. Now, although both the AST and the ALT are found in the liver, the AST is also found in other places such as the heart muscles, the kidney, brain, lungs, pancreas, and others. Because of this, elevations in the AST may be seen as secondary to non-hepatic causes as well. Next, let's look at the role of the liver in the biliary system. The biliary system refers to the liver, gallbladder, and the bile duct, and how they work together to make, store, and secrete bile into the intestines. The two enzymes we'll focus on to assess the health of this system is alkaline phosphatase, or ALP, and gamma glutamyl transferase, GGT. ALP is found in the bowel fluid. Bowel is produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. It is released into the intestines to aid with digestion and it's also found in the bones and intestines. GGT is found primarily in the membranes of cells in the liver but also in the lungs, pancreas, and intestines. It catalyzes the transfer of gamma glutamyl groups. Even though both of these enzymes are found in many organs, GGT is still said to be more specific to the biliary system than ALP. Now, bilirubin is also part of the biliary system. When red blood cells are broken down, they form unconjugated bilirubin. Unconjugated bilirubin then goes through the liver to form conjugated bilirubin. This conjugation makes the bilirubin more water-soluble, so it can be excreted through the kidneys. And conjugated bilirubin is also secreted into the bile and guts for excretion. Finally, we have the synthetic functions of the liver. The two things that the liver synthesizes that we'll focus on today is albumin and the clotting factors. Albumin is a protein in your plasma, and it helps keep the plasma in your bloodstream so it doesn't leak into other tissues. The pressure within the blood vessels that help plasma stay inside is also termed oncotic pressure. It also serves as a transporter for many things in the body, including drugs by binding to it. Lastly, we have the clotting factors, which as we all know, are important for clot formation. I discussed this in detail in my video, Doax vs. Warfarin. Link will be above. Now the liver pretty much synthesizes all the clotting factors except for factor eight. For the hepatic panel, we will specifically assess the prothrombin time which measures how long it takes for prothrombin to be converted into thrombin. Or clinically speaking, how long does it take for the blood to clot? When thrombin is formed, it converts fibrinogen into fibrin, the final product of the clotting cascade, and fibrin will help hold the clots together. Now that we have a good baseline of some of the enzymes in the liver, its role in the biliary system, and its synthetic functions, 
we can learn about how to interpret the hepatic panel. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and you're learning something from it, please hit the like button and subscribe to show appreciation. Thank you. Because reference ranges vary by institution, lab, etc., I don't usually include reference range numbers in the videos. Please follow the reference ranges that you are provided, so whether you are at school or for your job. The concepts will still apply, so it's either going to be normal, high, or low. Of course, if it's normal, then we good. So we don't need to worry too much about that. When they are out of range, that's when we want to interpret and figure out what's going on. A patient with increase in the AST and or ALT is a sign of liver injury, which can be due to any of these. Alcohol, medications, or an infection. The severity of the injury depends on how high the numbers are. And this can also help determine if it's more acute or chronic. A patient with a Tylenol overdose will have a much higher level of these enzymes than one with a long-standing chronic hepatitis. Also, because AST is found in other organs other than the liver, mild elevations may be due to injury in those organs. Having low AST ALT levels are uncommon and usually considered normal. But if you do see this, it can be due to a deficiency in vitamin B6, which is needed for these enzymes to function. An increase in ALP and GGT is usually because there is some kind of obstruction blocking the bowel from being released into the GI, also known as cholestasis. This can be due to liver injury, medications, infections, pancreatitis, or gallstones. If there are issues with the pancreas, the ALP and GGT tend to rise because they share the same duct. So the bowel duct from the gallbladder connects with the pancreatic duct to form the common bile duct, which is used as the passageway to release bile and digestive enzymes into the intestines. And of course, if there are any stones obstructing the flow of bile, we will see these enzymes increase. Because ALP is also found in the bones, having isolated increase in that may be due to bone damage. And having low levels of these enzymes is not common, but can be due to rare bone diseases. An increase in bilirubin is divided into two, elevated unconjugated bilirubin or elevated conjugated bilirubin. Remember, the unconjugated bilirubin normally goes to the liver to be conjugated and then released into the bile. Elevated unconjugated bilirubin may be due to hemolysis, where there is an increase in the breakdown of red blood cells, releasing bilirubin as a byproduct. So there will be a lot of unconjugated bilirubin that needs to go to the liver to be conjugated. This can also occur in patients with reduced blood flow to the liver like we see in heart failure. When conjugated bilirubin increases, it may be due to liver injury or cholestasis, blockage of the flow of bile into the intestines. Low bilirubin is not common, so we will not focus on that. Patients with high albumin may be due to dehydration or diarrhea. And patients with low albumin is due to proteinuria, burns, or if the body is undergoing a lot of stress and inflammation. Lastly, if a patient's blood is taking too long to clot, it may be due to the use of anticoagulant or vitamin K deficiency, bleeding, and liver injury preventing it from making these clotting factors. Low prothrombin time is not something we see often in clinical practice, so we will skip that part also. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you guys learned something from this video and it was straightforward. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video and take care.